and something new was created. Now, Ratatouille. That is a Pixar movie for those with a refined taste. I feel like you rarely hear this movie as anyone's absolute favourite, but so many people say it's a perfect polish of a movie. Literally all about the elitism behind taste and the relevance of reviewers against public opinion. It's an incredibly thought-provoking movie, but also way too short to me. It's a normal length of a movie, but somehow the ending always creeps up on me. Anyway, when you think of Ratatouille, everyone always only thinks of one particular scene. They have this... this tiny... Uh, a little... A little... Sure, there are all sorts of highlights and iconage, but the scene that really puts the concept together and actively changes the movie with his address of the conflict must come in when the reviewer finally gets a taste of the ratty food. Rambling about the significance of reviews, now that's an opportunity we have to jump on. It'll be more nuanced than anything I can say, so let's see how it all pans out. Everything in this movie has been building up to this final boss of a confrontation. This is the big, evil, super serious, ominous, cook career ending man that must be impressed by this revived restaurant commandeered by a rat, whether they realize it or not. Can anybody cook? Even someone as lowly as a literal rat? All is to be answered in the final scene now. Although maybe part of my pacing issues is that it's all in real time, at least the final night's events. Each scene rolls into the next. So let's say our finale scene starts when Colette enters the kitchen. Initially enraged by Linguini's rat-related revelation, and now finally looped back to us. The scary reviewer has already made his entrance and is waiting, Skinner the old owner has snuck in to see what's happening at the table, and the health inspector is being hunted down to be chucked in storage. Remy and his family have reconciled and all come together to populate the kitchen, replacing all the humans entirely. Minus Linguini, who's now set up as a super efficient skater waiter. And as taste testings are ongoing, finally, she enters. For her, this is her very first exposure. She doesn't get 94 minutes to get used to it like normal viewers do. And to be fair, if this wasn't engorged in the cartoony lens, we would probably have the same response. And in showing their progress in character development by the end of this movie, Linguini is very touchy-feely. Romantic arcs have entirely, well, arched. You came back, Colette, I... Don't say a word. But their dynamic as a duo is still clear. Colette can be pretty touchy-feely in her own way, in a very domineering way. But she's willing to stomach this absurd twist through her trust in this man. Ratatouille? It's a peasant dish. Cutting straight to instructions after requesting them with a light camera pan. The animosity between species is no longer unpleasant, so we have a pleasant camera motion. Over the shouldering as best you can with a rat as your subject to look up at the humans. And when looking back on him, there is this romantic kind of bloom. Usually the case when looking at Remy in the shots where he cannot speak English. It's gentle. And with a nod and touch on the shoulder, off they go. Don't worry about him, we're in the endgame. There's all sorts of story arcs coming to a close. And after a brief disagreement with the chef, it's now on to make that esteemed ratatouille. Montaging us, of course, through bits of the process. Keeping neutral here, just twisting a little. Focus pulling from foreground to background to show the two working in unison at different stations, as well as this craning shot of the main Ratatouille moment. Being a pretty simple shot to set up in animation, but from a live action set, this requires an automatic camera motion that perfectly mimics the same motion every take in order to achieve that cross dissolve effect of slightly later. With this motion once again meaning, look at all this, isn't it nice? Ready to chum in the oven. All the while interspersed with the stakes on the side, not only with the slight frantic speed of Linguini sporting around the restaurant, but stopping by on Anton Ego, designed to be as antagonistic as a realistic human can be. Dark blues to show the minimals of joy. And then we're back to the food. Close up for that money shot of all those toppings before finishing up on one more craning swirl, matched by Remy spouting a sauce in a circle around the dish. Lifting up just in time for our humans to express to each other, adding an extra little layer to an already culminating moment. And our linguini goes.
focusing first on the ratatouille itself before it's carted away, and then onto it again when placed on the table. It's not about the reviewer just yet, or this spy of a character who, again, we don't really need to worry about. Plot's been doing its plot thing. Ratatouille? They must be joking. But as he chuckles at the disadvantage of the restaurant, we again have a focus pull starting from the reviewer's pen. Expertly applied as it has been used for this craft many times before. It's a gulp before the main event for making such a bold choice. So agonizingly slow, really building up the tension for what this demonstrably scary man will think of it. It's only six seconds, but I'm only allowed to show six seconds at a time. They're really making me stretch for this. And it's not a moment of adoration. Just look at those teeth. It's more like a monster taking a bite you're so scared. Shocking to see this on a French character seems much more like a good, great British character trait. But then, of course, we get... <laughs> First, it's just a close-up, the eyes and the nose, opposite to the jaw we just saw. No longer is he being displayed as a beast. Before cutting back a bit to this mid-shot, prepping us for a match cut to some time in the past. Reaching there first with an aggressive dolly zoom as the background blurs away at a faster rate to Ego, pulling right out to within the Anton, visibly scratched from a fall on his bike. Suddenly, all those dark blues and dim hues are replaced with this unending warmth, the comfort of a childhood home, and the security of a time of peace. This ratatouille tastes like a mother's love, as the memory brings back a moment of support after a bad day. The mother, incredibly empowered at this low angle, explained by both baby Anton's small stature and for how much he must idolise his mother. The food is not even the focus, it's all about the sense of happiness felt in Anton's early days here. Something perhaps modern day Ego has long forgotten. But how? How did Remy manage to perfectly replicate Ego's mother's recipe first try like that? Well, I always liked the theory that they both came from the same source. Remy, of course, learning how to cook with a selection of human ingredients, all coming from the same little house in the middle of nowhere. At the start of the film, we see his very home, and who's housed there but some old lady. Jump back however many years Ego is old, and maybe in the distant past, this childhood home is the very same home, with the very same lady living in it. If Ratatouille was Remy's specialty, perhaps he learnt it through the very same recipe that Ego's mother used all those years ago and hence, he cooks exactly like this cruel reviewer's kind mum. Or it's just a practical reuse of assets and some movie luck magic. But as the end result is still the same, we zoom back into Anton's eyes and back to that fateful night in the restaurant. Reversal of what we saw before, warping everyone now back into place as Ego re-associates. Such a simple shot, and yet it tells so much. It's a slow-mo drop of the most important item of Ego's, practically his only item. Here he is to tell a scathing review, and yet immediately, he stopped working, coming to a realisation of his purpose in life as a whole, and reassessing what he is doing in the moment. Wanting to just eat and enjoy the food, rather than critique it. As, after all, this is where he would have started. I don't like food, I love it. And that love must have started from a genuine enjoyment in the food laid in front of him. The pure joy of satisfaction and good food perhaps being the very core of his career that he'd forgotten along the way. What with his drab attire and affinity for the negative. So with a gentle pan down, Ego starts to act upon this newfound revelation, and cracks a giant smile unapologetically. It's the best case outcome <laughs> Jesus Christ, we It's the best case outcome for this clear underdog of a restaurant. You're now at the halfway mark, so you know what to do. Subscribe if you haven't already, or suggest more animated scenes you'd be interested in us breaking down. Otherwise, let's get back into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Irrelevant prior manager also has a bit of a moment, like in the food, though it comes off a little more orgasmic. Not that he succumbs to actually enjoying the food anyway. He is unworthy of the food! Chuck him in the freezer! <laughs> and so Ego is ecstatic, wanting to give compliments to the chef for the first time in a long while, presented with a gentle twirl on Linguini before he realises that that's not the chef of the night. Then who do I thank for the meal? Now with the camera sort of neutralising out, there's less romanticism because our subject has changed to the missing character in this exchange. To which they then deliberate on how to and whether to tell him the full truth. Zooms on a once again scowling ego, over the shoulder as they argue from the door holes and some more cross dissolves as the camera pulls further and further back to insinuate the passing of time as Ego is more than happy to wait till the end of the evening to see this five star chef and enjoy a couple of bottles of fine wine as well it seems. Only the best quality for a man with as high a stature as him until eventually they show him. At first Ego thinks it's a joke Keeping Remy blurred in the foreground is an interesting choice for his reveal, but it makes sense considering this is all about the reaction. And then we cut to a wide of the three observing the kitchen, the opposite extreme of perspective. Though Ego still stands as this immensely tall and slender figure. You know, they do say height is a strong factor in a person's success due to their domineering advantage. <laughs> but yes, it's a collection of reaction shots from all sorts of angles. Mid-shot looking down over the shoulder. He doesn't react beyond asking an occasional question. And all presented with Ego's unrelenting expression. Kinda hard to read, and because of that it's all the more worrying. As we have now switched to narration from Remy to hear a little more from his voice actor, as well as guide us over this re-explanation of events. Until, eventually, we hear all the words that Anton Ego has to say on the matter reflecting not just on the restaurant, but the role of reviewing as a whole. So I want to dissect his individual lines here as well. I'm sure this era of Pixar has something incredibly profound to say ahead of its time and all. In many ways, the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little. And as Ego verbalises his review, we'll be treated to an assortment of him thinking whimsically against his incredibly fitting apartment, high rising against the cityscape of France, much like his position as a dominant overlord, despite what his words are saying. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read. Uh, yeah, forget 2007, this idea still applies now. I myself have made a whole living off of doing terrible reviews. They are fun to make and demonstrably, people enjoy seeking them out. Whilst yes, I take very little risk, anyone can do what we do, and it's probably a good cause for all of our imposter syndromes. In fact, this scene series was my answer to avoiding the cynical rabbit hole of only making the most popular grumbly content. I wanted to seek out more of a balance for my own long-term well-being. A piece of junk is more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. Oof. Questioning the entire value of reviews as a whole. A kind of point that's even been addressed recently, what with the split of responses to the Super Mario movie. If the critics that are faulting a movie are doing so in a way that doesn't match those of the public opinion, then what is their purpose, if not to misguide the people through their blatant out of touchness? If the movie, or in this case the food, brings in so much undeniable joy, what input does some cruel review bring, if it's not even accurate to the audience that is meant to receive it? Maybe our work has always been useless, certainly less so than our subjects. Also, yes, Ego's typewriter is a skull, very ominous. There are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the defence of the new. Now, cinematically, we switch to the rats, symbolically focusing on the new subject, of course, with a dialogueless epilogue for our main characters. But yes, the times a critic may be at risk is when they go against the grain of some sort, putting bad reviews on a good product, or more controversially, 
putting good reviews on a bad. Abdicating from their very duty of guiding the public to a certain conclusion. I don't recall too much of that happening IRL per se, other than on the full scale of critics mismatching with recent productions, but for Ego it's obviously very targeted. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. Highlighting the final moment our characters get that night, waiting with bated breath to hear the response. With a more clear and nuanced reformatting of Chef Gusto's motto that anyone can cook. And as Ego comes to his glowing clothes, expressing his surprise with unexpectedly more slang language like They have rocked me to my core. We finalise our victory with the highest praise one can enunciate. The genius now cooking at Gusto, who is the finest chef in France. Wow. Accompanied with footage of Remy laid back against the beautiful Eiffel Tower and a warm glowing sunset. The end to this chapter and a resounding, secure success. That, my esteemed viewers, is the scene that changed Ratatouille. It's the key moment we all remember best, with a little topping of some meta review commentary to boot. An incredible end to an iconic story, but for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a little bit.